Hi guys, uh, welcome to Investing with JYK and today we'll talk about a company called Assured Guarantee and um, it's a bond uh, insurance company so it's kind of a weird business if you think about it essentially uh, the majority of their uh, business is selling um, insurance to bond issuers such as a lot of California uh, the California municipalities or uh, some infrastructure work in US or some international ones and um, they will receive a premium and in exchange for the premium they will guarantee that bond so in the case of a default they will pay the interest and the principal in place of the issuer, i.e. Um, well, let's say, for example, let's say uh, the city of Sacramento wants to issue a bond and uh, because um, uh, you know, they have very shaky finances, uh, they're financial rating, their credit rating is low, let's say it's barely investment grade and um, uh, so their cost of capital be high, say uh, 5% for example and then a short guarantee say, oh um, I can insure you so I will charge you 1% as a premium per year and uh, uh, given that uh, we'll be able to sell this bond at double uh, A ratings, or uh, yeah, double A ratings. So uh, you know, then you sell that uh, maybe like a five-year bond for uh, three percent per year uh, as a coupon payment instead of five. So uh, the logic is supposedly that the city get uh, total cost of capital lower to four percent and then a short guarantee would take that 1%. And uh, the um, bond buyers uh, don't have to worry too much about the uh, um, the uh, credit worthiness of uh, the issuer. So they only have to worry about the credit worthiness of a short guarantee. So if you think about it, it also almost sounds like magic for some reason. Uh, the risk that was to be compensated by the 5% interest somehow disappeared and became f and then 4% was able to account for that risk. So where does that risk go, right? So one explanation you could say uh, you know, because a short guarantee does a very good job at uh, evaluating the credit worthiness of their uh, of the individual issuers of the R uh, as well as the individual bonds. But then you think about it, isn't the bond rating agency supposed to be doing that? So I'm always a bit suspicious about this kind of business model. It's supposed to be five, like five percent, should be the real reflection of the risk involved, and somehow you're able to reduce that. I don't buy it. But that aside, they seem to be making money for this whole time. And uh, let's take a look. Um, let's look at their uh, their income. Uh, you can see that uh, they're an insurance company, so you got these uh, net earned premiums, and then uh, you have net investment income, so that's how, how they invest. So this is a funny part as well. So they take these premiums and reinvest in uh, like uh, municipal bonds or corporate bonds, um, and then take a interest out of that. It's, it's quite funny. Um, and uh, you have some derivative gains and losses and whatnot. And their total revenue is something like, this is in millions, so 
seven billion dollars, and then uh, uh, their give uh, take out the expenses, which a lot of that goes to the loss uh, adjustment. So, um, and then the total expenses something like that, and then you take out some um, interest and uh, sorry, you take out some uh, taxes. And then uh, you get your net income, which seems rather high if you look at the <laughs> revenue. So out of the one thousand seven, oh, one point seven billion dollars, you get seven hundred and fifty million dollars in, in sorry, seven hundred and thirty million dollars in uh, uh, income. So that is fairly high. Um, okay. And then you can see their income has been uh, dropping since uh, 2014. Uh, much of, of that um, has something to do with the, uh, uh, well, for, first Puerto Rico, and then uh, they're also de uh, lowering leverage. So their income would drop, but you can see uh, their earnings doesn't drop as much. Um, per share at least, the diluted especially, you can see the basic and the diluted is actually smaller than the basic, that just means they being constantly buying back shares. Um, oh, sorry, I'm wrong. I meant um, no, no, they, they have been constantly buying back shares, but diluted is smaller than basic, so th there's uh, some outstanding um, either options or um, uh, convertible bonds. They don't. I don't think that they have a convertible bond, but they do have options. Um, probably to their employees. All right, so we got a shrinking company here, uh, but it's making money. And uh, the other important, uh, interesting thing is if you look at Seeking Alpha, you can look at their numbers. Uh, AGO, and uh, let's make this bigger. Some fairly interesting numbers you can see. The PB is like 0 0.6, PE is about 6. And return on asset is like five, and return on equity is about eleven. So, so, so I mean, these two are not uh, bad looking numbers, right? Obviously, asset turnover ratio is super low because uh, their asset base is actually pretty large. Uh, we'll take a look at that later. But yeah, uh, they have some revenue growth, but they have an earning uh, their earnings uh, going down. So if you just look at these numbers, you would think it's like a perfect uh, value play, right? Because you get, I don't know, like six, uh, sixteen percent uh, just from sixteen uh, percent uh, just from uh, the earnings yield, and they also you also get paid a little bit in terms of dividend yield here. So and then you look at their debt. It doesn't to look too high. It looks like two billion dollars on a, a revenue of one point five billion dollars. So everything seems to be looking good, but you shouldn't be fooled. It's not. I'm not saying this is a bad company. I actually own this company, but I just find that this company to be quite weird. Okay, so for this company, let let's think about. Uh, the, the the business model a little bit more, right? So can they significantly increase earning given the same asset base? Well, there are potentially two ways. One is uh, they increase the premium uh, in terms of the absolute value. So that could either happen as the rate goes up. So let's take an example. The 10-year the rate now is 3%. A year and a half ago was like 1.5, 1 1.7, 1. 1. 1. something. Let's say 1.5 for for sake of simplicity, right? So 1.5, then double A is probably going to be at um, 10 year double A might be something like three. So that's um, the, then you add a little bit to it, maybe like you know 3.5. That's how you can how much you can sell, and then your cost of capital is essentially. Uh, Gonna be uh three percent, and uh, maybe you know the the cheap the issuer that they're insuring 
is going to be um, otherwise would be paying say four percent so you got a wiggle room between um, you know one point uh, sorry three to four percent you got a one percentage uh, difference so maybe you cut it in half then you get 0 0.5 percent in terms of premium and uh, as the rate increases uh, as the 10 year now is three is very likely the the uh, credit spread would also increase the credit spread is just the uh, interest rate difference between different credit uh, a different credit level um, issuers so US government at three percent maybe the uh, you know Sacramento might be 5.5 so now instead of a one percent oh and then sorry US government at uh, at uh, three and then AGO so double a uh, rating might be something like four, and then your uh, your uh, uh, municipality, the thing, the people that need insurance, maybe five point five. So essentially, you get a one point five percentage difference, and you cut that in half, you will be at uh, zero point seven five in in terms of um, uh, how much uh, premium they can charge per year. So that is essentially one way they can increase um, earning but that's outside of their control that's uh, increasing interest rates right? so but that also has other effects so at some point maybe uh, these issuers can't afford to borrow or nobody's gonna uh, or like the interest payment will be such a high proportion of their income that uh, you know it, it it's basically just going to bankruptcy um, but that's one way the other way is they could increase leverage so they could uh, insure more bonds um, with the same amount of capital that they have so this is basically two ways and that that basically means if something goes wrong they will be dead uh, faster um, okay so I don't think they are increasing leverage. In fact, I think they're decreasing leverage. They have a little graph here showing that they really, they're pretty proud of themselves decreasing leverage. Let me find that. Donde esta? Here. It went from uh, 47 times to 20 times. What does that mean, 20 times? 20 times. Um, uh, 20 times claim paying resources just means that if 5% of the bonds um, suddenly go default right, they will lose in terms of a net par uh, par is just the issuing price the face value of the, of the, of the bond 5% um, go kaput the entire company gets wiped out Obviously, at that point, they don't immediately die because that just wipes them out. But if you get any more than that 5%, uh, then yeah, then, uh, then this company will go bankrupt as well. So this is indeed a business of picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Um, and uh, um, this, in Nassim Taleb's... Um, Nassim Taleb's uh, book, um, uh, Black Swan, this is one of the uh, like turkey type of uh, investments. So what it does is it would continually do good, 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 and boom. At some point, it might just go to zero. So it, it, there's a possibility it would just go to zero and almost overnight. And um, a similar... Um, Turkey investment, I call these, is XIV. Ta -da! If you look at 10 years, they went from $12 all the way to $144 just to give it back in that one day, going to $5. And then they liquidated themselves. But uh, be cognizant that this stuff can go to zero okay um, but
but they're reducing leverage. Um, so uh, arguably, it's a good thing. Now, uh, so that just means for our purposes, we just need to make sure. Um, we need to understand where the downside is, and then the upside, you know, their their income will just take care of themselves. I'm not really worried about the income at six times earnings. Who gives a shit? Uh, you know, they can have zero growth, or they can shrink their earning by half. They might, um, uh, as long as their revenue doesn't shrink, uh, it will come back. Uh, so, so it's almost like, you know, the the. The, um, the revenue will keep add, adding to the uh, to the book value. At some point, you take a big loss because some big default happens, and then it takes another ten years to get it back. So the overall um, return should be fairly low. Uh, maybe if you hold it through these cycles, maybe say just average uh, returns, so or maybe eight percent. Uh, or some somewhere less at this current market, maybe like five. Uh, so let's make let's see how, if they're gonna go kaput. Okay, so we got this investments and cash. Uh, so that's basically uh, fairly liquid stuff. Uh, obviously, it's asset, so you know. You can't go. You can't go kaput on an asset. You have some premiums that has yet to be received, and you have some. Uh, um, I actually don't know what this is. Seeded unearned premium reserve. Some money, but it's tiny, so I'm going to ignore that. Uh, so they recovered subrogation. I'm not sure what this is. It's very small. I'm not going to ignore this. And uh, these derivative assets, very small. I'm going to ignore that. So I basically ignored all these. Um, basically, it's what they have is just cash. Cash plus some premiums that are yet to be received. Uh, but it's tiny, so it's probably just uh, uh, like timing issue in terms of uh, you know, they, they pay premium maybe every, uh, every time that the interest is paid for or something. And then the... December thirty first, um, there is like a some accumulated premium hasn't been paid yet. All right, let's look at liabilities. Uh, we've got uh, these unearned premium reserve. So that's basically uh, premiums that have been uh, received but are left there as uh, for future. Um, uh, for future payouts, uh, and then as time goes on, this will e slowly get uh, uh, this will uh, this um, slowly disappear and appear as like a, an earning line. It this would appear in some kind of earning line. So I think we might see it here. Net earned premiums. Um, it will show up here, I think. Yeah, um, but this line can then be broken up as um, the new premiums and then the, the, the old premiums. So the new premiums, some of that would end up here and some of that uh, would end up um, going into both those two lines, one in here and one in here. And uh, it will balance out. And they have some loss reserve, so this is how much they expect to lose, basically. And their shareholder equity is uh, $6.8 billion. Now, these two lines, they actually hold in, in their hands. So you kind of have to um, add them when, you have, when you're thinking about uh, the, when they take a loss. Because when they take a loss, this line plus these two lines, right? Or if you think about it, it's really like uh, this line or this line, which isn't too different. Um, minus, let's to be conservative, we just think about these two lines. So twelve k, twelve billion dollars, minus uh, the debt, minus. Um, 
this guy obviously you have to pay the reinsurance uh, for to some people and then minus these guy this guy here and I don't know what this is but these two actually keep so you're lo looking at about 10 billion um, a little bit more than 10 billion dollars so this this guy would offset basically this one a, a little bit less and um, so you're looking at uh, 1.1 billion dollars yeah so 11 billion dollars you're looking at 11 billion dollars of uh, paying power essentially and then they have this guy i'm not entirely sure what the hell this oh claim pain resource yeah yes that is what we just calculated basically um so this is how much they can pay okay and then once uh losses are being paid it will get deducted from this line and uh, essentially you will you, this will go to zero first and then uh, you start drawing down here uh, okay sorry what i mean is um when losses when loss first come in you first draw down here and here at the same time you would uh take down your reserve at the same time as you take down your uh, your uh, cash until this thing is exhausted this thing will then get um, further reduced uh, the reserve thing is just here so that it makes the the accounting looks a little smoother also um, if you think about it it makes sense that you make some as insurance right you take anytime you you um, uh, you sell a policy you would expect a certain amount of loss and you set that aside and then you don't count that as your uh, own money and then when you but this is still your cash at the moment and when you at the time of payout you first kind of pay it out from the reserve that you set aside previously so your cash reduces but in terms of accounting your um, liability your loss liability also reduces because it actually uh, materialized so the risk kind of got um, discharged in a way all right so this is what they hold so this is um, how much they can pay so this is an important number 11.7 billion dollars now everybody the, the whole reason this thing is selling at zero point uh, what was it something like zero point six times earnings or something six yeah sorry this zero point six times book All right so their market cap um, is a four billion dollars even though their equity was uh, six billion dollars if you look at here six point eight billion dollars and then a market cap is like four billion dollars so the, the the majority the main reason that they're selling at this price is because of Puerto Rico Puerto Rico basically defaulted on their debts um, and I don't think they are very likely going to pay so if they do it'd be a nice thing if they don't such is life right and um, uh, well you're gonna as a the, the whole reason you get this company there instead of you holding the uh, loan is that you are uh, if as a bondholder you know get you're gonna get paid and then you don't have to sue Puerto Rico who the person well the company is gonna sue Puerto Rico is a short guarantee so they are going to fight the legal battles right? so maybe they'll get some payout they take a haircut 50% whatever um, but let's see their Puerto Rico exposure Puerto Rico uh, actually I think it was five billion dollars or something yeah the company has an aggregate five billion dollars net par exposure to the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico and various obligations and its related authorities and public corporations so by law yeah it's very clear they should be paid because uh, they're creditors creditors always get paid first uh, in a def even in a, a bankruptcy creditors um, are uh, 
you know, creditors are always paid before any equity holders. But in the case of public entities, there's no equity holder. Nobody owns anything, uh, which is why I think they are a bit sucky. Um, yeah. So $5 billion. Imagine if all that debt go away. Right? So, so Puerto Rico does not pay a single cent of it. The worst scenario, what is going to happen? Um, claim paying, uh, what was it? It was called, uh, blah, 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 blah. blah. I'm just gonna go balance sheet. Uh, sorry, somewhere is my balance sheet. It's called select financial. Selected financial data. Sixty-seven. Yeah. All right. So let's look at here. Five billion dollars. That will come out of here. Now, basically, uh, or you can think of the, the cash will get reduced by five billion. So that means they will be at six billion dollars in terms of cash. Which means they are not going bankrupt. They, with with um, cash on hand. Even if their equity goes negative, they're not going bankrupt. But they're not going bankrupt anyways. Um, their equity not, is not going negative either. So what's going to happen is uh, $5 billion, you're going to reduce. First of all, you're going to take the $5 billion out of this. And some of that will come up here. I don't know how much. Uh, some of I, I don't know how much of this is Puerto Rican uh Pre, uh, unearned premium, but it will definitely come out of this. So one four 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 minus five thousand. So you're looking at a three point five billion dollar loss uh, on paper, right? So plus six eight three nine is a three two eight three. Uh, million dollars in terms of market cap okay so that loss will mean that the market uh, the sorry ma not market in terms of uh, shareholder equity the shareholder equity is going to be 3283 divided by the current um, market cap minus one you will lose 22 percent basically Okay, so if they just lost Puerto Rico, 100% lost Puerto Rico. And if you value that, since now at that point, the, the risk is actually gone. Um, the book value, sh the stocks should start trading at book value. And then you should be looking at 22% loss. So you will lose 22%. If Puerto Rico actually gives you 50%, um, then... In that case, you're looking at uh, 2.5 billion dollars. So 2,500 minus 1444. Um, sorry, the other way around. 1444 minus 2,500 plus the um, uh, shareholder equity. So 6839. You're looking at 5783 million dollars and uh, that as you can see is higher than your market cap and that just means by 4.23 uh, oh sorry 4230 you are looking at a 37 percent gain so this company at the moment is essentially a play on Puerto Rican bonds. If Puerto Rico defaults completely, you get 22% loss. If Puerto Rico does not default, obviously you gain a lot of money. Um, and uh, if Puerto Rico defaults by 50%, if they, you know, 
just say, oh, we're not going to pay 50% of our debt, we're going to pay you half, they will get, uh, you, we should be expecting, as a shareholder, uh, like I, should be expecting a 37% gain. In the meantime, they have about a 10% return on equity, so take some, um, uh, let's say 8% uh, return on equity, right, in the meantime. So while you wait, the book value should be increasing at 8% a year, if not more. And uh, if Puerto Rico goes bust, then I lose 22 or something, I think, 22%. If Puerto Rico loses 50%, um, the bond takes a 50% loss, I gain 37%. And um, I don't even need to worry about the the uh, nice case, in which case uh, is highly unlikely that Puerto Rico is going to pay back the whole thing, because if you think about it, all Puerto Rico, everything in Puerto Rico is, is insured by this company, and that's five billion dollars. The whole freaking um, so I actually read this somewhere. I don't remember where I read this. The whole freaking island. The population is like $3 million. Yay, Pornhub. That's what I, I look at. Uh, Puerto Rico um, population. They, they have a declining population. They're losing people. They have $3 million. So if you look at $5 billion, right, divided by 3 billion yeah you're looking at something like thousand dollars for every single person in that or two thousand close to two thousand dollars for every single person for for this uh um for this island actually that that might not be right i think it's that they're not insuring the whole uh the whole island's debt total debt Puerto Rico total public debt that's what they have oh sorry haha <laughs> yeah completely wrong sorry 6.16 holy crap 68 billion dollars <laughs> oh. 3.3 million. Yeah, so everybody has 20k to pay. And it's not gonna happen. Uh, yeah, no, it's not gonna happen. So, that. And then the other funny thing that I, I read somewhere is that some of the bonds that they insured are from the Puerto Rico, like, water company and then the electricity company. And what happens is these companies don't seem to collect their bills. They have like 10%, 20% bill uncollected. It's just crazy. Um, so yeah, so I'm pessimistic on recouping for AGO to recoup all their, uh, all their money. But it's a probability game. So let's see. See if uh, Puerto Rico is going to make it. And... Uh, Overall, it's a po positive expected return. Don't make this your largest holding, obviously. Uh, what we want to do is make multiple bets that have positive expected return, um, hopefully north of 10% um, per year, and uh, have them be uncorrelated so that it becomes a pure probability game and then you should win just by probability and uh, that's all we can do in as a, as investors in this uh, this world so yeah um, thanks and uh, if you like the AGO analysis please subscribe and click like and uh, I'm thinking of doing um, what what I, I was thinking of doing a preferred uh, share next time is one with fairly nice yield and uh, uh, fairly low risk as well so you know keep keep uh, 
stay in tune and I'll, I'll keep you updated. See you next time.